evening we begin the Paschal Triduum of the Passion, Death and Resurrection of the Lord. We commemorate this evening in this Holy Mass the first celebration of the Eucharist, the institution of the priesthood of the New Covenant. And we place on the altar at the offertory this evening the oils blessed by the bishop yesterday in our cathedral to symbolize our unity with the bishop who is present at all these celebrations, spiritually speaking, in our parishes throughout the coming year. So Holy Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Bernadette Lane. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted the Church a sacrifice for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month is to be the first of all others for you, the first month of your year. Speak to the whole community of Israel and say, On the tenth day of this month, each man must take an animal from the flock, one for each family, one for each household. If the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with his neighbour, the nearest to his house as the number of persons required. You must take it into account what each man can eat in deciding the number of that for the animal. It must be an animal without blemish, a male one year old. You may take it from either sheep or goats. You must keep it till the 14th day of the month when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two evenings. Some of the blood must be then taken and put on the two doorposts and lintel of the houses where it is eaten. That night the flesh is to be eaten, roasted on the fire. It, is, it must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall eat it like this, with a grindle around your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in your hand. You shall eat it hastily. It is Passover in honour of the Lord. That night I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down the, all the firstborns in the land of Egypt. Man and beast alike, and I shall deal out punishment to all gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the houses that you live in. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and you shall escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is a day of remembrance for, for you, and you must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honour. For all generations, you are to declare a day of festival forever. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. This is what I received from the Lord and in turn passed on to you, that on the same night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do it as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God.
the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was before the festival of the Passover, and Jesus knew that his hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were his in the world, and now he showed how perfect his love was. They were at supper, and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And he got up from table, removed his outer garment and taking a towel, wrapped it round his waist. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, At the moment you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus replied, If I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. Then, Lord, said Simon Peter, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well, Jesus said, no one who has taken a bath needs washing. He is clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are. He knew who was going to betray him. That was why he said, though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet and put on his clothes again, he went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly, so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. If you knew that you were going to die tomorrow, what would you do today? What would you want to say to your family, to our loved ones? What would you want to give them? The day before he died, Jesus gave his family and loved ones not something that would fade with time, something that will be forgotten. He gave them himself, his body, his blood, the sacrifice of the new and eternal covenant until he comes again. The Paschal Lamb and all the sacrifices of the Old Testament are now replaced by the gift of himself. Now this is my 40th celebration of Monday Thursday as a priest. So I hope you'll understand therefore why this evening I want to dwell a little bit on the sacrament of the priesthood, which is a major part of Christ's parting gift to the church this night before he suffered. You probably know that when a priest is ordained, the central act of the sacrament is the imposition of the hands of the bishop on the head of the candidate. An action which the apostles performed when they ordained and which signifies the power that comes from Christ and from the Twelve. 
This is followed by the hands of the priest being anointed with the sacred chrism because we give our hands to Christ so that he can perform good through us. What he asks is that our hands become instruments for making him present in the world. He wants our hands to be the means whereby he gives rather than takes, and so that our hands can still in some way pass on his own divine touch. Furthermore, Jesus truly delivers himself into our hands, which is why they are anointed to show that they are set apart to handle holy things, to handle the mysteries of God. So the laying on of hands, the anointing of hands, the investiture with the stole and the chasuble, and the handing over of the chalice and the pattern, all tell us that the priesthood of the new covenant exists to perpetuate the sacrifice of Jesus until the end of the world. Now, the power to absolve sin is a big part of this too. We have to share in the awareness of Jesus that sin and misery exist in our world. So the key to reopen the door to the Father's house is also placed in our hands. But never forgetting that the priest can only be a dispenser of divine mercy because he himself has been the recipient. He too has knelt at the feet of another priest to receive absolution. Jesus says, I no longer call you servants, but friends. The core of the priesthood is being a friend of Jesus Christ, only in this way can we truly speak and act in the person of Christ, even if our total unworthiness can never jeopardize the validity of the sacraments. Being this intimate of Jesus, being a priest, means being a man of prayer, because only through prayer can we function as one with him, not being his servants, but truly his friends. The world needs God not just any God, but the God of Jesus Christ, the God who made himself flesh and blood, who loved us to the point of dying for us, who rose and created with himself room for us. Whether we share in the ministerial priesthood of Christ or are members of the priesthood of all of the baptized, our call is uniquely the same, to show Jesus Christ to the world by our way of life. And the Mass is most central in all of this. Because in the Mass we see what is most essential in life. In the Mass, when celebrated authentically, we take up with gratitude, with thanksgiving, the sentiment of the psalmist. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? Indeed, how can we ever thank God for the life he's given us? The answer lies within the psalm itself. Because God responds graciously to his own questions. How else could we render thanks to God for all his goodness to us, if not by hearkening to his own words? I will raise the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the Lord's name. The priest is the one who raises that chalice of salvation and calls on the name of the Lord in the name of the entire people of God. And I think at this point I could sound an appeal to anyone considering their future life and vocation, especially our young people. Do not be afraid to give Christ your life. Because the priestly life, yes, it's not a natural life. It's a supernatural life. Nothing will ever replace the ministry of priests at the heart of the church. Nothing will ever replace a mass for the salvation of the world. Whenever Christ calls us, we can never leave that call unanswered. 
Now, in addition to the hands of the priest being consecrated for service at the altar, they're also anointed for service. This is the prominent action of Jesus at the Last Supper. He stoops to wash the feet of his first priests. St. John, in his Gospel, doesn't mention the institution of the Eucharist, but only this act of humble service, in which we see the initiation of the priesthood of the new and eternal covenant. The priest does this tonight, imitating that mandate of Jesus. It's how we get the name Maundy Thursday, his mandatum novum, his new command. And I'm doing it this evening to those who are preparing for the sacraments at Easter or those who've received them recently and have entered the family of the church. Finally, one of my favourite prayers in the entire Mass is the prayer that the liturgy puts on our lips before Holy Communion. The priest says, Lord Jesus Christ, your death gave life to the world. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Let us ask that we never fall away from communion with the body of Christ, the church, with Christ himself. That we do not fall away one inch from the Eucharistic mystery. Let us ask that he will never let go of our hands. Let us pray for our priests daily that we will never let go of his hands. And turning, as I always do, to Mary, the mother of the church, we ask her to keep us all in faithful service to her son and bring us all safely one day to the eternal banquet promised and anticipated by these mysteries that we celebrate here. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now.
My dear brothers and sisters, on this most solemn night, as we recall the Passover of the Lord, we turn with confidence to the Father and offer some prayers. For the Pope, bishops, and priests of the Holy Church of Christ, that there may be granted fidelity in their sacred vocation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all of us present here, that we will grow in profound respect and adoration of the Most Holy Eucharist. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For vocations to the priesthood, that there may always be sufficient priests to bring us Christ in his sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For peace in our world, especially in the Middle East and Ukraine, that the people of war may be converted and turn back to God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend these and all our prayers to the living intercession of Mary, Queen of the Most Blessed Eucharist. Hail Mary. Lord, 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 the Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed are thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary. Let us pause to pray for our own int intentions in silence. Father, have mercy on your church in its need. Hear the prayers of all who share your life in the blessed Eucharist and never abandon the people who call upon you. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. And grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who established this pattern of everlasting sacrifice, and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong, and as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day, on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonos, John and, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. And we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we will be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, 
graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all the world, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once who are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. In the Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all we sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, with those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Anastasia, Cecilia and Axasia and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not wearing our merits, but granting us your forgiveness. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow all these good things on us, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Show each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take up. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. 